<laughs> Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Chan Fan Huang, and I am a product designer working for Pivotal. And I'm Matthew Horn, a software engineer at Pivotal. So who we are? Uh, we're a team, actually four teams, of uh, developers at, uh, at Pivotal right now. Uh, but we also work with uh, external collaborators as well. We are the Bosch Windows team, the Garden Windows team, the .NET developer experience team, and a pair of developers working on Kubernetes. Uh, we love open source, and in fact, we wouldn't have gotten started if it weren't for the open source efforts of other foundation members. We enable Windows workloads to run on Cloud Foundry, and we support .NET applications specifically on Cloud Foundry Windows. We also bring cloud-native practices to .NET. Uh, so Steel Toe is an example of that that Sean Fon will touch on in a bit. So Sean Fon, why don't you share a little bit about why we're here? Thanks, Matt. So. Today, we're here to share with you what we have seen from Microsoft and what we heard from the end users and what we think all that means for this wonderful Cloud Foundry community. So the first thing we heard recently from Microsoft is that .NET Core can not only just run on Windows, it runs on Linux and runs on Mac OS. It's diverse and inclusive. And .NET is a modern and progressive platform. You can build anything and everything with .NET. Plus, if you are concerned about your agile project management, you have your CI CD needs. Azure DevOps is your one-stop solution for all. And Microsoft even embraced open source. Well, all that is very exciting and encouraging, and our end users are reassuring that. The thought leaders from the blogospheres are very ex excited about the new future that the .NET would uh, enable, and they're particularly excited about the fact that Microsoft is separating .NET from Windows. That has expanded the uh, tooling around building for the .NET applications. For example, we have seen the Visual Studio for Mac OS, and we, they also developed the .NET command line interface for the Linux users. All of these is to say that today, .NET is truly a cross-platform tool. Yet, some of the most loyal Microsoft customers are struggling to keep up with the ever-changing ecosystem. And we have heard this actual quote that our badge management system is still running on Windows 98. So we have all heard about that. Our end users are bought in with this. The cloud is the future. And the future is now. And we have done a lot of work to bring our applications to the cloud, to Cloud Foundry. There are applications that we have successfully migrated. Probably majority of them are Java. Java just went faster in this cloud-native development uh, progress. But what about the rest of the workloads that we have not captured into the cloud yet? When we looked at many of our end users' uh, application portfolio, they are consist of probably uh, equal part of Java applications and .NET application. And both Java and .NET face legacy problems. And we have gone quicker and faster with modernizing the Java legacy applications. But what about modernizing .NET applications? Some of us are talking about maybe we should write a book about this.
But besides dreaming of a book that hasn't been written yet, we have done some other work, and we're very proud of our achievement in the past few years. Matt, please. Thanks, Sean Fon. So what have we done so far? Back in 2015, we first introduced what we called Diego for Windows. This was a manually installed uh, Diego Windows cell running on some technology that was donated to the foundation uh, called IronFrame. We were able to get production workloads running with Diego for Windows uh, on what we called the Windows 2012 R2 stack. This allowed us to get customer and user applications into production uh, and start getting feedback about whether or not this was a thing people actually wanted. It turns out it was. This was G8 in 2015, and we finally uh, sunset it in 2017. Now, every Windows cell that's out there is being deployed with Bosch. Bosch support was introduced in 2016. We finally had the ability to sit down with the Bosch CLI and say, Bosch, deploy a Windows cell. This is powered by the work of our Bosch Windows team. And initially, we supported deploying the Windows 2012 stack, but now we have support for Windows Server containers as of 2016. We maintain a few different lines of stem cells, 2012 R2 for legacy, 1709 and 1803. And until Microsoft pulled it down, we also had support for 2019, uh, but that has been uh, removed for reasons. Come and talk with us later for more. Uh, 2012 R2 is our legacy stack. We are looking to retire it. If you have any opinions on that, please let Sean Fon and I know. In 2017, we enabled the ability to CFSSH into uh, the Windows 2016 stack. This allowed developers to have a much more familiar experience that they're used to in the Linux world, but on Windows. True containerization support was also introduced in Windows 2016, which allowed us to bring CFSSH to the platform. In April of this year, Sean Fon demoed at CF Summit in Boston the ability to remote debug an application running on the Cloud Foundry platform in Windows. And this is, once again, bringing parity and the expectations that users have of the platform to Windows. And today, we're excited to announce that Windows has official support for multi-build packs. And so you can now actually compose build packs to pull in third-party libraries or change configuration in your application. We've got a quick little video demo of that. So here we have an app that was pushed. It's got a white background. Notice the white background. Uh, I'm going to push this app again using what I call the CSS build pack. As you can imagine, there's some CSS in that build pack, and it's going to change that page. Uh, in the push, you can see that there's an additional build pack. And as the application stages, you'll see that it runs two build packs, the CSS build pack and then the HWC build pack. And when the app pushes, I reload the page. Hey, it's got a gray background. Now, that's a pretty silly demo, uh, but it shows you what we can do with these build packs. You can extend the staging process, add DLLs or change configuration, uh, whatever you need to do with your application. So, oh, I'm missing my slide here. Uh-oh. Yeah. There we go. So. What about a renaissance? Uh, we talked a little bit about, about the renaissance at the beginning, and then we just talked about a bunch of new features in the platform. So let's tie this all together. Users of Cloud Foundry don't just run Windows. They've got Linux workloads, like Sean Fon showed. Uh, they've got Linux microservices, they've got .NET microservices, and they all need to talk to each other. Users also have expectations of the platform. They want it to be easy to use all this stuff. They want to be able to hook up with uh, Eureka and have circuit breakers with Hystrix. Well, we've got some of that with .NET. And we're focusing on bringing all these features to the Windows platform via an effort we call pragmatic parity. If there are things in the Linux world that make sense for Windows, we'll bring those features to the Windows stack. But not everything makes sense on Windows, just like we have things that only exist in Windows, 
like PowerShell support that maybe you don't need in Linux. We've got Steeltoe running on Windows now. We have CFSSH running on Windows now. We are a great target for Greenfield applications, but also Lift and Shift applications. Everything integrates seamlessly together on one platform. There's a lot of work that goes into making this all work, and we need your help. So I'm going to bring Sean Fon back up to tell you how you can get involved. So we really couldn't have done all this without the community support. Most of us are hanging out on the Garden Windows channel on Slack, the Cloud Foundry Slack. Please reach out to us if you have any requests or questions. And these are our GitHub repos. We love pull requests. We will post these slides online. And uh, you can check out the links from the conference page. And please contribute to Steeltoe. Steeltoe is a wonderful flip framework for building microservices for .NET applications to the cloud. And also this afternoon, at 3.30, Natalie Ariano and Matt from our team will give a talk about making Cloud Foundry the best platform for .NET. Thank you all. <laughs>